all weirdos. Nude science is the revolution. Nude science is the revolution. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Best New Comics of the Week show. That means I'm here with Gray. What up, Gray? Hey, my God, I'm here again. Great to be Hello, here, Jim. Love. How are you doing, Lord? Yeah, oh, my goodness. Uh, at least this podcast is a little cheaper than the Oasis uh, tickets for their return. It's uh, This is free. The Oasis Holy tickets moly, like Batman. 300 bucks. Crazy, right? <laughs> it's so crazy. Uh, but I, I'm telling you, we were talking before we started. If the when if and when they come to the states, if they come to Philadelphia, I will be tempted to go. But the, those ticket prices are Same. insane. If you come to Japan, I'll be tempted. But if it's like two hundred dollars, no thanks. No, yeah, I'll I'll get the home video or something. But with all that, I'm not talking Oasis, we're talking new comics and the best new comics. We're going to get right into this. Let me remind everybody before we start, though, that these are our favorite comics. Me and Gray, we didn't read everything. There's some things that we're not caught up on, all that stuff. And some things that we're not even aware or don't read. Doesn't mean that you can't tell us that those are your favorites. Please put it in the comments below and let us know what your favorites are. I always say it each and every week, but it is kind of how I picked up some books and ended up putting some books on my pull list where people had mentioned, oh, you should read this and I will go and read it. So if you do end up saying Hey, check that out. As long as it's something like, again, if you say, oh, my God, Spawn's great. You have to read every issue. It's never happening. But if you end up where there's something somewhat new, I will check it out. And I think Gray will as well. But again, these are our favorites. We're going to start with DC Comics. I will I'll kick it off right here. I'm telling you, we're streamlining cool. it this week. Uh, and also, before we go into this book. Uh, a bunch of people, there's this weird idea. Some people end up thinking that this is a review show, but it's more of a best of. While we will go into some detail, we try not to spoil everything. So some people said that they were spoiling stuff. I don't know. You can never win. You I'm can't telling win, you, 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 do can't this, you. you can't. Everybody's always yelling. And then that one guy, he didn't like the theme song. I'm like, well, whatever. I mean, it, that's such a little part it's of really this. Short like, as well. I, I, I ended up, it's, it's seven seconds. It's not a ten minute <laughs> intro. You know what I mean? You I said, talking to he you ended you. up. Yes, yeah. He ended up. I like Yule's songs that he plays, though. But in the thing with <laughs> oh, that, awesome. with that, they end up where I, I don't know. This guy's like, oh, the show. It could. It would be better without that seven seconds. Ay, ay, I don't get it. But here we go. I do get this. The first book from DC is a book that was delayed immensely. And I will tell you that when I first read it, it wouldn't have been in the best of. I read it again for our podcast, our DC Comics podcast. And because the first time through, and it is Batman Off World number five, I should say that. The idea when I read it the first time, I, I had to think of what had happened. Four months, Jim. Yeah, 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 six four months. months yeah. Jesus. I think you're right. I, I just guessed. But it's that long ago. I think it was April. So the first time through, that was more of like kind of reacquainting myself with it. And then the second time through, I actually enjoyed it enough to be on the best of. And it is Batman Offworld number five, written by Jason Aaron, art by Doug Mankey. The art is really good. The one thing that I said on the podcast, somebody tell me why it was delayed. Because it's a weird thing. Yes, the art is really good, but I don't think it took four months for the issue. No. And also, sometimes when things get delayed that are more in continuity, that while well, this is back in the day continuity, but it doesn't affect anything in the now. Sometimes when you have delays, this is Jeff John's problem. You'll end up having a, enough delay that now you have to rewrite things because things have come and passed you by in the regular continuity and it doesn't work. That's not with this book. I don't get it. I don't know why it was delayed. And even that first time through, I was kind of annoyed at the idea that why was this delayed? But then the second time through, I read it. Punchbot's great. Love Punchbot. And even such things as Ioni and these Black Sun twins. It's a really cool story. And it's a cool way to show that Batman ended up training and going into, uh, you know, space to figure out how to, to fight aliens. It was a really clever idea by Jason Aaron to show that. Now, in the meantime, at one point in the book, it is mentioned. Did you read it, Gray? I didn't even ask. I did, you. I did, and I made um, punch bot for president. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, Come he's on, awesome. Man. And now Great he's warbot. When he says warbot, I'm like, no, 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 stick with punch bot. Yeah. That's the best. And also, there was one point where Batman actually just calls him robot. I got offended. Punch bot's way more than that. But the one thing that got me here, and the one thing that made it almost not on, because I'm like right at the line, I gave it an eight on the podcast, which is pretty much our line okay. that we draw in the sand for it. 
The one thing that put me down on it is the reveal that Batman kind of was responsible for billions of people dying. It was way too big. That that it, the idea that Batman would leave that and not be devastated completely by it really threw no, me off. No, that's, thought, that's off, yeah. That's I thought off. that it was too much. If you would have said, I mean, even a thousand people, but a billions? And like, that was that. It really Jim, threw me off. Jim, how long but, did that fight go on for as well? Who that was, was the, the, the yes. Thanagari was <laughs> the fighting. Thanagari and, yeah, Jesus, the, uh, what a the fight. The bounty hunter. It, it lasted so long. The funny thing, it was almost like They Live, the movie with Rowdy, Rowdy, Rowdy Piper. Where that one fight just keeps going oh, and going. A when scene, when that, you yeah. end up though, so where good. Batman beats the Thanagarian, he's he's carrying him back, and the Thanagarian wakes up and the fight starts again. Luckily, <laughs> you end up having some things that that end up pushing it forward. But I I do agree that that was a long long fight, but it kind of made Batman a badass. Well, I did love the art. You're right about the art. The art's awesome. It's take okay. It's taken four months maybe for Doug Mang, you know, to get it together. But come on, it looks amazing. There's one one page that one page spread deal where you did end up having Batman slugging the Thanagarian. It was really good. Like yes. it looks great. And we're getting to the end. It's the penultimate issue, and you end up having the Black Sun twins and things like that, and Batman going for it. And I think there was a little twist by the end. I think that what we're seeing uh, wasn't quite what we're seeing and there might be a little twist to it but we'll see i'll tell you what i mean off the air because i don't want to spoil things because people get mad at us and they're going to yell at us but that's my first pick of the night we're going to go off to you and you're going to pick a book that uh, traditionally i've hated I, I mean more than most people this issue i think is really good it actually is a shame that it's the penultimate issue but you go with it okay it is surprisingly Detective Comics issue 1088, written by Ram V. The main story's got art by Gwilym March, and it's it's awesome, Jim, isn't it? I love the yeah. art in the main story. Yeah, the story, art's really good. Say. Yeah, and just again, when I say that we give an eight or above or the best of, I think on the podcast I gave this a seven, eight, so I was almost there. Oh, but you then were close. when we were talking about it, I, I can accept it as being, I'll accept it and go with it because you actually have action. And that's something that's been kind of missing in this book. And so actually, the action. pacing is quick. It and is. that's another thing that we never have in this book, and it actually surprised me. That's and what you surprised get... me. No way. I was going to say the same thing. I kind of flew through this book, but there's so much happening. There's so much going on. You know, you get your real like value for your money with this. Yeah, I agree. And the backup by Dan Waters, while I think the art is garbage, you end up having a backup that is probably the most important backup that we've had in this whole series. Because, yeah. And I'm not, again, I'm not going to spoil it, but it sets up things for the finale that are pretty cool. Also, I really love, because you have the Orgums, they come into Gotham, and you have the mother, she's like, kind of like, I don't know, it, I, I said that she seems to want to make Gotham better, but really she just wants to get rid of Batman. That's the whole Orgum's thing. But at this point, she just yells out, this place is loony to us. Like, I'm, she's so I upset. That, yeah. And I'm she like, gets and so that, angry. <laughs> I actually wish that it, the ending, maybe, I don't know, but if she just says, this city is a crap hole, I'm out, and just leave shaking her head, that would be so perfect. That the city is such a crap hole, but it's Batman's crap hole. And she just like, you can have it and leaves, but I, I believe it'll be something else. But Jim, I told you already that I love the Ten-Eyed Man. I'm a big fan of that character. I know some people don't like it and they don't like the text they use, you know, the font for his, the way he talks. But the art on those pages, it's fantastic. I, really, yeah. I love it. Oh, I, I agree. And when you get the thing, and I've said it before, one of the things that I point out, if you tell me that, oh, my God, this run of Ram V's is great. That's your opinion. That's fine. Everybody can have an opinion. Most people don't even remember the names of the organs. This story has been going on for over two years. No, and I And most don't. people don't know all the names, but <laughs> I, I, I kind of know a bunch of them. In fact, right now, without even reading the issue again, I remember Niang, who ends up fighting Mr. Freeze. I couldn't remember that when we were doing the podcast two hours before. So these names kind of come in and out, but you get that Shavhod, who's kind of like the Ten-Eyed Woman, and she fights the Ten-Eyed Man. You get this Niang versus Mr. Freeze. You end up getting uh, Gail Tinklaw, the Wolfman, which oh, I yeah. hit the deal. He the ends wolf up fighting the like. Wolfman. Two-Face, Two-Face Man. The fight with Two-Face is amazing. It's great. Yeah, that's the most kick-ass thing we've had in this whole series. And by the end, it really isn't that much of a Batman story. It's more of the villains, but that was yeah, set up. Is. And it's fast-paced. It's good action. The art's great. Now, Gilly March, I really like. I always have liked him. The backup art's nonsense, but you get a big thing there that, again, if you read the book and for some reason you don't read the backups, maybe you're like, eh, they don't matter. You don't like them. You should read this one because it really sets up a thing for 
the finale, which is the next issue. That's crazy. But just I'll, one word I'll of advice for Ram V, Jim. Please make your characters' names, your villains' characters' names, a bit easier to remember. You know, Arzen, Daria, Arzen, like, Orgum, the <laughs> Asthma. <laughs> Niang, I used to have to when I was young. You know yeah, I mean? really. I think some of these things he puts in, I have to go to the doctor and get penicillin for. Him, but you end up all <laughs> the stuff going on. Shavrod, no, I'm telling you, it's crazy. But it looks like it might finish in a cool way. So, so we'll see. Uh, that's next month. He's we'll have right the finale. Ten ninety, one hundred and nine. Oh, yeah, two issues. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna have uh, Tom Taylor, which people are a little <gasps> bit uh, kind of shaking their heads. Something I like Tom Taylor. But then I don't like Tom Taylor. I like a Tom Taylor from like five years ago. I liked his deceased. The newer one. The first yeah, one. Yeah, and I actually, some people pish posh injustice. I loved it. I thought it was great. And some of the other things. He has a story in the Batman Superman book from the New 52. It's like a three-parter. It's awesome. It's really, oh, really okay. good. It's one of my favorite stories from the New 52. Uh, but then, I don't know, something happened because he went from being the guy who was known for killing too many characters to then the guy who has heroes that will never punch anybody i don't know he kind of i think he started like reading too much twitter and things like that (laughs) and and i can't do that there there are people that are listening they're probably i'm driving them nuts because they just think tom taylor is like the devil i i don't think he's that bad i just his writing to me has devolved a bit and i hope that maybe getting on a new book with detective does something but he already announced the first story is going to be going back to the alley back in the day to show Something else that happened. I don't need that. I just want stories going forward. But we're going to move to the next, the next book. It's your pick. Now, he's he's pretty this this pick and this book. People seem to generally like, but I will never pick a book from this guy because his flash run is the most god awful thing, and it drove me nuts again this week. Just drives me nuts. But what is it? I can't read Flash, but I can read um, John Constantine, Hellblazer, Dead in America, Issue 8, Jim. Cy Spurrier, of course. It's got a different artist this week. It's um, so this month. Lisandro Esteren, who's done work before on, um, I think, some of the, the Sandman, the Glass House series. He's got a different style, but it's awesome because in this issue, John goes to hell and he's with Etrigan, the annoying, griming demon. But it like, what's the word? stealing. It tips its hat to so many things that have happened in the past. You know, you get like nods to the Jamie Delano run, the Garth Ennis run. There's all sorts going on. Sandman run as well. There's there's so much in it. It's a dense, dense issue, but it's worth going through. I think it's probably the best issue yet. And and it's one of those things, and we, we've talked about it on this show, I've talked about it on the podcast, when you have certain writers who have a, a kind of a specific skill set, they kind of blend in more with something like, you know, Cy Spurrier and Hellblazer makes way more sense than Cy oh, yeah. Spurrier Flash. Flash, and yeah. And he ends up going into Flash. He ain't going to change his style. So he goes to Cosmic Horror, he said. It's it's a horror, all right? I, I can't barely read it. And one of the few books that's continuing with Cy Spurrier the, through this all-in stuff. That and Tom Taylor's Wonder Woman. I don't get it. Why are those two continuing? I was so surprised about the Flash continuing with you i really thought yeah. that it was gonna maybe it's one of those i don't know maybe they're trying to find somebody to get on the book I'd or rather something have but, to keep going but i know it won't but you know that's yeah yeah happen. i think that they did extend it uh, uh to they 12 did. that right yeah. so at least you get that and it that's kind of a cool play for cyspear because if you know when that first came as hellblazer came out around the time the shutdown kind of screwed things up and it, it was re- people loved it and then it kind of ended early so some of the stuff he said that he's doing now is stuff that he they had planned before. So that's yeah. nice that they gave him a little bit more of it because people are liking it. People are really enjoying the Hellblazer. And really, if you go and you look up things of Hellblazer and John Constantine, his last run, that, that one that did get shut down, a lot of people have that on their that list. That is really good. good. I prefer yeah. the last one to this, Jim. This has been up and down. I think I've said it to you a few times. Though. Some issues I've loved. Some have been like, hmm. Not yeah, sure. it hasn't been on your list every time it no, comes it out. No, it hasn't. So, yeah, so I, I, again, go. I think his flash stinks, but it's good that he has something that he's decent at. So you have that. But that is it for DC. We have those three books. Three from DC. Come yeah, on. I mean, that's the thing I was just going to say. Oh, we're going <laughs> to. I said the idea of this. <laughs> I, I, I say that we have three. I was just going to say, if you like more, don't get mad at us. But that's the most. DC books we've had in a while. In ages, yeah. Yeah, it is. And we're going to move on. And what's really odd about tonight is that we don't have a ton of indie books. And there are, I I recognize, there's some that came out that I know people will like, but some of the things that we like, like, you know, the uh, Transformers or some of the G.I. Joe stuff, the Ghost Machine, they didn't come out this week. That's right. So a couple of the things that we like. Though I was surprised at one, but we're not talking that yet. I will ask 
you when we get there because next is Marvel. We have two books. I think these two books will drive everybody nuts. And this is where <laughs> we're going to get yelled at because Uh-oh. I'll do the first one. It's Deadpool Team Up number one, written and art by Rob Liefeld. I will tell you right now, the story makes not a lick of sense. It, it, it doesn't now. And it feels like, you know, when you get a cold open, even in a movie where you just get thrown into a scene, but it's kind of cool and you have fun with it and then you get to the main deal. This is like a cold open through the whole thing. I don't know really what was happening. It's Deadpool. And also it's Rob Liefeld's last Deadpool story. So that's pretty big. And it's Deadpool looking for dragon eggs, but he's teaming up with the craziest people. Dragon Man's in here. By the end, you do get Wolverine, but you have all this crazy stuff going on. And I just thought it was fun. And I ended up talking. This is kind of the same thing that I thought. And one book that we didn't talk about last week that I actually, somebody mentioned, it wasn't Matt. Dr. Matt said, me and him both liked the Wolverine Revenge, while some people didn't. I did. I, for, I forgot that it was that last was my week. Pick. <laughs> yeah, and we we did. It, so it was the crazy deal. So the idea that he was giving me crap for uh, not saying that I that was my pick and and things like that going on. But this Deadpool team up, I think that some people may not like it. They may just you know push it aside. Oh, Rob Liefeld, whatever. I like Rob Liefeld. I think I like his art. I actually I like the maybe, art, Jim, but I lost. I didn't know what was going on. I'll be honest. Nobody yeah, did. I, I, I don't no think Rob Liefeld what knew going what was going on. on. I'm telling you, I'm putting it in for fun factor that I just laughed the whole time yeah. because I had no idea what was going on. But it's more of a personal pick of something I enjoyed. And Great dragon, it kind of isn't feels it? back. Yeah, yeah. And it, it's something like it feels back in the day and stuff. Like, yeah, and it's it all Rob Liefeld stuff, all twisted and turned together. So it. it and if you do. Listen to the aficionados and stuff on Wes's channel. Uh, Doc and Wes are going to review it, and Doc liked it. He he agreed with me on most of the things. So if he no likes way, it, Doc it, likes yeah, a modern yeah, comic. Like, and Doesn't speaking of it. which, I think Yule even said that he had fun with it. So it was yeah. kind of a cool, cool okay. little play. Uh, but the second book of the Marvel, the second and last book of Marvel, this is a book that if you, I'm telling you, if you're on the street and you say you like this book, you're going to get beat up. People get so angry at me or you or anybody who says they like it. Odd, but what is it, Gray? I've liked all these issues. It is Ultimate X-Men, issue six, Peach Momoko, of course. Um, You were saying before, Jim, maybe if they called it Ultimate Runaways, it would have gone down a lot better. Yeah, and and here's the thing. You can't start out the phase, you know, phase one of the Ultimates with a Ultimate Runaways. But if they would have waited, had somebody else do kind of more of a legit X-Men book, and then in the second or third round of books, throw in an Ultimate Runaways and have this. I don't think there'd be any problems. I think that people would have enjoyed it a lot more yeah, because me too. it's it's less pressure on a Runaways book than it is for an X-Men It should X-Men have been its book. own thing right from the start. It shouldn't have been Ultimate X-Men. It should have done their own, you know, like what you call it, Elseworlds, What If, anything like that. But yeah, give Peach Momoko time, you know, let her build this story because it's fascinating. I like it. I like it. It's a little bit clunky. I will say that this issue. I, uh, this issue I bit. gave on the podcast, I gave a little less of a, a review. Uh, just, I'll even, I gave it a six. I gave okay. it a six out of ten. It ends the arc and you get some info, but it's, it's still very slow paced. It is very, very some slow good paced. I some like good it. action in this. Oh, yeah. You, you had some things. Plus, you end up having. <laughs> You know, they're playing basketball, which I, I always enjoy. <laughs> but you, you do end up revealing some things and opening up the world. She started that last issue, and it's this whole nefarious organization, the Children of the Atom. We don't know. Again, what it does is she reveals one thing, but then makes like three mysteries about it. And that, yeah. ca- that can get frustrating. But if, you're, if you like the slower pace, that's fine. But again, the characters, half the characters that are in the book now were runaway characters in the 616. And the whole thing is their parents are involved in an evil organization, which is straight up runaways. But it's an X-Men book. And I keep saying every time on the podcast, if you don't like it because you say there's no traditional X-Men, I can't tell you any different because there isn't. You know what I mean? I do like May. I do like a lot of the characters in it. It's just the idea that they're not. It's not a traditional X Men book. I get the criticism, Jim. I understand it, but I'm, some people saying it's the worst comic out there. That is just. It's not true. It's its own thing. They definitely didn't read Gotham City Sirens then, or, <laughs> right, or Leo Fire and Ice, Power Girl, day, or yeah, Fire yeah. and Ice, or stuff like that. Hawk Girl. This is not the worst comic. It I'm might biased, be something that doesn't I'm biased go. because of the you know the Japanese angle. I love it. I like yeah. So maybe really, not, when you say you it's it, bad, you like the manga. You know the manga style exactly. If you say it's bad, you're insulting Gray. So don't do it. <laughs> 
well, it's okay. I'm an AI, so it doesn't matter. You know what exactly. I mean? So again, it's its own thing. It's doing a weird thing, but it, it ends up like almost. It feels like Peach Moko had a lot put on her shoulders having it an Ultimate X Men book. I give her a little credit for having the balls to kind of do the story oh, yeah, and do it me slow. Because she's not a writer; she's an artist first. You know what I mean? She's learning to be a writer. I think, and, with and this, there is this comic. You, you see some pacing problems in it, yeah, even even do. transition problems from scene to scene. She'll have some problems; it gets a little clunky at times. But again, art is very subjective, and I like the art. And I think the art's getting better with each issue. I think that she's getting comfortable with the layouts and things like that. But then I say that, and I know for a fact that in in the comments, there's going to be people who say that two year olds can draw better. And I, just, <laughs> I again, if you don't like the art, you don't like the art. It's subjective, yeah. but you don't have to be nasty about it. And I said exactly. the last time I think we had this on the book, it's not like Peach Momoko went to Jonathan Hickman and held him hostage and said, "I'm doing this book this way, and you don't have anything to say about it. Screw you." They are obviously telling her what they wanted out of this and she's doing it but she's the one getting all the blame it's not like she's writing this in a vacuum and and going against any wishes especially I appreciate Hickman, it. who's it's a bit doing pricey, the stuff. i understand it that is. it's 4.99 and it is a fast read but you know what it merits a reread this comic i think and i think Always. it's one of those that uh it could have been a cool like weekly series uh, it, it should come out like a manga because it doesn't reveal a lot each issue mm. but if you did have four a month it would be kicking but uh yeah, unfortunately, again, it's one of those books that people will pish posh. Uh, and that's fine. That's fine. Me and you are enjoying it. I, I have really enjoyed it. This issue I thought was a little down because I wanted more out of an end of an arc, but that's fine. But we'll go to the indie stuff, which will tie everything together and we'll end. One of the things, we have one book. We only have one indie book. It's kind of a book that's another one. I would never recommend this to people because unless I knew what they liked or how old they were or whatever. Uh, because it's really good, but I'm actually shocked that you didn't have Savage Sword of Conan on it. Uh, that uh, on your list, I thought that you would have it that. It wasn't as good as I was yeah, hoping. I read it's it. Still it, good, it was, but... Yeah, yeah, I I'm know. with you. Are you sometimes though? You pick some sus books, is what I'm saying. <laughs> the, the one <laughs> book we have from Image, it's Gromits, and it's Gromits number four, written by Rick Remender, Brian Posehn, and art by Marino Dinicio, which the art is incredible. And it's weird. It's like it's not incredible in the way of detailed art that looks like you could put in, you know, a museum or anything. It's it's incredible for the style it is. It looks a lot like Mad Magazine and stuff like that style, yeah, or even yeah. like the cards that you used to get back in the seventies and eighties with the almost like the Cabbage Patch Kids, but they had these other cards that that they had these characters like this. But it's just the slice of life. These kids going around in the eighties smoking pot, doing their thing, and at this point at issue number four, you kind of have like the characters kind of like are friends now. Like the characters have been done so well that when you're reading it, while you don't have a lot of like, it's not a superhero book, but things happen and you get so mad and you get into it. And it's it, slice and, of and life. Laugh. It is. It's and, comedy. It's nostalgia. I get that. If you're not a skater, if you weren't born or you're know, alive in the 80s, maybe you won't, you won't enjoy it as much. But I don't know. What yeah, do that's reckon? why I say like if I would say if somebody was, you know, 20 and they asked if they would like it, I don't know. Yeah. Because same. a lot of the fun of it is seeing like the original Taco Bell and the Taco Bell menu you had last issue and things like that and the skateboard stuff. Very accurate. And all that going. I said that if I would explain it in a way to compare it to something, it's kind of like the movie Dazed and Confused. When you go and watch that, it, uh, if, you're, yeah, if yeah. you get the idea and the nostalgia of it, it's really good, but not a ton happens. It's just a day and you're going through it. And it's kind of like that with this going it's and seeing what's house going on. That you just know it's all going to go wrong, don't you? I love the way it's been set up, but it does get quite emotional, this issue. I was quite surprised. The, the depth of the character writing was very good. That's why it made my, my pick. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that the way it's played out that you really realize, and it's one of those, it's like, oh my God, like I really like these characters. Or yeah. when you're doing it, you're like, oh, that's so that guy, or that's so that girl, like because you kind of know them now, and it's really cool. And it's one of those few books I think uh, actually gets better each issue. And because, you, you know, it builds on it, and you have fun, and you kind of get the characters and things like this. And there's, there's a thing going on with one character's grandfather that's kind of sad. There's a lot going on. And you have our main characters dad is you see is a real piece of crap and one of the things in it like imagine the idea of a superhero book where you end up like the biggest thing uh, alien invasion but when you're the ages of these kids and you're going one of the worst things that could ever happen is moving 
because you're not going to have your friends and these girls and these and they're the dad's threatening to move to like Arizona and that that's like a disaster when you're a kid and that's kind of the I way know, it's the worst thing isn't it that can happen to you I guess as a kid like you don't and want to move like the biggest your disaster yeah. yeah so it, it really plays out that way that's the scope of it but it's it like plays out the things are big for the characters I, I think it's really good I think that people should well, check it, it out if they're not the movie night Jim and the movie night is VHS video cassette you yeah know and I mean? it's VHS and it's uh, Escape from New York which is pretty cool. Fantastic. Yeah, I was seeing that on there, and it was really, really cool. Actually, yeah, it was that. I, I don't have the issue up, but I do believe it was that. No, you're that. right. It is. Escape New York. Snake Plissken. Yeah, He's so cool. For some reason, I thought it was uh, like Big Trouble in Little China out of nowhere, but it was uh, Escape from New York, which is cool. And yeah, they're all sitting around doing stuff and hanging and, you know, doing. It, it's really good. So check that out. That's it. That is it for the show. Again, I'm sure that there's going to be people, there's a lot of books that came out. A lot of yep. people like some things. I know for specifically, there are a couple that people will probably mention. I'll even mention the one would be Sacrifices. Yeah, me too. Me that and was you close. Aren't, yeah, and I'm not caught up. I have to read a couple more issues, and uh, I have to get caught up with that. So it probably would be on my list, but I'm not caught up with that. You said it was close. There's, I think, Void Rivals came out this week, and I, I like Void Rivals. It's kind of that side book that I don't in this issue. I don't know until the very end. There wasn't a ton going on. So I, I almost had that, but I didn't. Oh, my God, Jim. I just realized I've forgotten one. I'm so sorry. Oh, did you? Which one was it? Dark Horse, Nemesis, Rogue's oh, Gallery. Geez. issue. You know two. what? what I, I forgot, doing? too. What are we, oh we're adding it now. It's not even on the deal. That's what I'm, I think that's my favorite book of the that's week. That's my pick of the week. Yeah, I'm so sorry yeah, about that. Oh, my goodness. Uh, and it is Mark Mel- Miller and Valerio. Gia Giordano. I'm glad you thought of this because people would have called me out. I think I gave it like a nine or something maybe even higher on our indie podcast that we have on our Patreon. It is good. And it and the funny really thing good. about it is, and I ended up where I'm talking with it on our podcast with a younger guy who hasn't really read any Mark Miller and has never read any Nemesis. And he's really enjoying it just because oh, of the idea that you can get into it even if you just like Batman. And his nemesis is kind of that, uh, you know, and what I like about Mark Miller, and he's done this, he did it last issue of Nemesis, he uses tropes, and he uses known things, and he subverts them, or he, he makes them, like, them awful. The yeah, he yeah. does. And at this point, you pretty much have Batman and Robin, cool how they set it up, and you get Nemesis having a partner, but then they end up having the oath ceremony, and instead, just the little things, where Batman and Robin, Dick Grayson, they did that with Candlelight. Nemesis does it with a Molotov cocktail, and I'm wondering how long this is going to take because this thing's going to blow. But then at the at the one point, a running joke goes where at the end you end up, you know, Batman says, "Hey, now we're going to oomph," and the guy's like, "What?" And he's, "Ah, I'm just joking." And they they walk away from it. It's really funny, and it, it really sets up a bunch of things, and it's cool. And you end up having montages. It's really quick. It's it's great. And the art's what really good. What kind of sidekick, Jay? What kind of sidekick would the most evil, you know, villain or anti-hero in the world go for? And it's cool. I, I love it. The the whole like the way he breaks him out of the the court, gets out of jail. It's so well done. It's you can see it almost as an action action scene. Oh yeah, a movie. it could definitely be. And then at one point, there's one of the funniest things where the plan goes awry. I'm not going to say it, but it's really funny. That was really that funny. Yeah, it was really I didn't good. Spoil that. I don't and spoil then that. and then at the one deal. They end up impersonating a guy to get his money and mansion because they need somewhere to stay. And when they go in there, Nemesis, one of his first things that he says with the sidekick when he goes in, he's like, I hope you like horrors and cocaine because I overordered both. And it's just it's just <laughs> like crazy. The thing that I said when we reviewed it, it really, really feels the one thing it feels like the beginning of Wanted. It feels like this sidekick yes. almost is the play of Wesley in the and wanted, but I don't mind that because I love that Even as Kingsman, well. It's like it's like an evil version, you know, the dark version of Kingsman as well, things like that. Yeah, so and much fun. So when you go in this Miller verse in the Miller world, the thing when you had like a Kickass, which you know, kind of the first hero, and then yeah. you had wanted where people were turning and whatnot. This is the opposite where the heroes have now come back. And even Nemesis says in this, these heroes that came back, they have partners and teams. Well, I think I should, too. And he ends up getting this kid. I don't know if he's going to live, you know, to see the next big event. We'll see. Uh, but I do think that he had one of the worst costumes I've ever seen by the it end. I will the say ambassadors, that. the ambassadors costumes, isn't it, a little bit? I thought it was cool. Yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> I didn't like it. And I'm like, ooh, that's, that's pretty crazy. And he gives them a name. and So you get all that. But it's really fun. 
It's really quick. And I'm telling you, I used Comic Book Roundup to go through and see the books. And I'm okay, I like that one. I don't know how I overlooked this. And I went down this list. I thought like it was seven the week times. before. I've seen this, you know, two weeks ago. And that happens so, too. My God. Yeah. So I'm, I'm glad getting old, Jim. What can I I'm, say? I'm glad you brought that up. Because, yeah, that's it's probably my two book indies. of the week again. Thank God for that. Two yeah, indies. so we had that. I, I did have a couple others, but I ended up, like I said, there's some things I'm not caught up on, but I'm sure that people let us know. But, again, let us know what your picks of the week, your best of the week, are in the comments below. And if you have the same as us, just you know, still tell us why you like it. And if you disagree with us and think we're jerks, just go somewhere else. That's what I'll say at the end uh, because I'm sick of arguing with people. And when you're arguing, you argue. well, and that's the thing, when you're <laughs> arguing with people that you're not a jerk, that's not a great argument to be in. You know what I mean? Like, I'm pleading my case that I'm not a jerk. Why should I care? But I do. I, I'm an emotional fella. That's what it is. I, you're I like almost, Luke Skywalker, aren't you? You care. I care. That's the thing. Luke Skywalker is my favorite Star Wars character, and most of my friends like Han Solo. I oh. like Luke. I always like Luke. And actually, my second as a hot take is Princess Leia. Han's third, and and sometimes Chewbacca might leapfrog. Him. Leia, Leia's yeah. awesome. Leia's oh my god, great. Luke though is the deal, and I I love I always love Luke. So the and innocent again, farm boy, dude. That's all you are. Yep, and my I I argue with people uh, all the time. <laughs> my favorite is New Hope, uh, where everybody seems to love Empire Strikes Back, but I I like New Hope so much, and the idea that it's kind of a it could be just a solo movie. Uh, it oh, makes yeah. it even better Without And a it's doubt. a fairy tale I, I really like it And uh, by the way I hate Star Trek That's just to throw it in at the end Just to get Now you can yell at me about that But I do not like Star it's Trek It's all over so. now Jim We're going to get killed in the comments for And that. I'm one oh, of the people God. Like I know that people will be like Listen you can like anything you want And you can I'm a Star Wars fan, and that makes me not like Star Trek. It just has to be. It always was. I would fight with well, people when I was a kid. Back in the day, yeah, it I was used a kid to be. fighting you that. Were Star Wars or you were Star Trek. You, you couldn't have both. Nope. And I, I still go with that. I had a friend named David Kearney. This guy was the biggest Star Trek fan this side of Stork. <laughs> Shout out to Stork. The, the biggest <laughs> fan since then. He end up, this kid had plans of the enterprise and stuff like that that he would carry around in this role thing nonsense uh i'd fight with him all the time and there's really no fight because you like what you like but Did i he teach uh, himself how to speak klingon oh yeah he knew klingon this kid was so <laughs> over the Amazing. top also this is the thing that made it work in my mind i like star wars i'm a dummy he likes star trek this guy was a genius that's what it seemed to be to me when i was a kid i'm like Cool kids that just like action like the Star Wars, these geeky nerds, they like Star Trek. And uh, that's how I went with it. But yeah, Star Trek blows. So there you go. Take that, Tribbles. But yeah, that's the end of the show. I just like to get that in there to drive Stork nuts. Uh, but that's that. So let us know all that. You don't have to fight with me about Star Trek versus Star Wars because I will say, current Star Wars, I'm not involved. This is more of original trilogy as well. So with all that, thanks always. For joining me, Gray. Thank he is you. A Japanese AI. He also has a YouTube channel that will have a link in the show notes. The Wakasashi's Tea House, and me and him often talk and even mention on the show. We're kind of a little down on the uh, comic YouTube. It's one of those things that you know we need a little encouragement. So go over and look and watch Gray's videos. We're waiting and, for you. Yeah, we're waiting for you. And, and he also has movie reviews, things like that, that are really, really good. So go check that out. And then in the meantime. I'll try to get more videos up. I said on the aficionados that I'm, I'm going to do all this. And afterwards, you even said you were watching. You're like, really? And you so weren't listening. Yeah, that's the deal. <laughs> uh, I'm going to try. I end up, I, again, I get discouraged at points too. And just like, eh, nobody's going to like that. But if you like this, this show always keeps going. I like doing the show. A lot of the other things are with me on my own. I don't like doing that. I just There's like not, talking comics with you. Yeah, I, that's what I like. There's some things that I like doing on my own, but they're not going to be up, available on YouTube. They would Ladies. be demonetized. I might get canceled. So with all of that, thanks, everybody. Thanks, Gray. And we will talk to you all later. You are all weirdos. Weird science is the revolution. Weird science is the revolution.